Fighting the Terminants in Helldivers 2 can be a pretty overwhelming situation at times. Yeah, they're not doing the bullet barrage thing like the automatons, but at the same time when you have a charger charging at you or a bio titan in your face and you're getting swarmed by stalkers and hunters, it can be pretty frustrating to deal with at times. So to help alleviate some of the overwhelming feeling that you get when you're dealing with the Terminids, I decided to go ahead and share my full loadout exactly some of the things I run and give you some suggestions on what you should run starting with the primary all the way down to the stratagems. But anyways, let's get into it. So for the primary weapon, the Breaker Shotgun, the Breaker Shotgun with Fire, the Punisher, or the new LAS Sickle are by far your best bet. The Shotgun meta is real in Helldivers 2, so the Punisher Shotgun has been soaring to the top of most people's list after one of the more recent balancing patches because the Breaker Shotgun was actually nerfed and they ended up giving a lot of really positive buffs to the Punisher Shotgun. However, do not sleep on the LAS Sickle. This is available in the most recent Warbond for Helldivers 2, and this is a laser auto rifle that fires at a high rate and is super freaking accurate and is great with dealing with all sorts of bug enemies. The best part about this weapon is that it has basically unlimited ammo if you manage the heat well. It's gonna work even better on cold planets and then the ones where there's a lot of heat, it's not gonna work as well. So you wanna run one of the shotgun variants. Again, any of these options are viable. Even the breaker shotgun with fire is actually pretty freaking good against the bugs, especially with dealing with a lot of bugs. But at the end of the day, I really do think that the punisher shotgun is the default option that I most times use and the LAS Sickle is definitely a close second for me. For secondaries, the P19 is always a good choice, but if you have the new Warbond, the LAS-7 Dagger is also an excellent choice as well. The LAS-7 is a laser gun, and this is really good at mob clearing, so it's very viable as a primary weapon at times. But again, either option is fine. They both do their jobs. If you're in a pinch and you need to kill an enemy really quickly, both of these are really good options. For your grenade, you want to use impact or heavy grenade when dealing with the missions that require you to seal the bug holes, but I would strongly recommend recommend that you take a look at the G23 stun grenade as well. These are great for stun locking any enemy, including vile titans. I mean, they literally stop dead in their tracks, and if uh, you have a few people on your team running these, you can pretty much keep a, a bile titan standing still and hit it with whatever you want. But again, if you have a lot of bug holes you need to close, like in a blitz mission or something like that, bringing impact grenades or heavy grenades is always required. But again, in the other situations, a G23 stun is actually going to be even more effective against the bugs. All right, for your armor, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I recommend light armor here above anything else. Being fast is one of the biggest things you can do to survive a lot of high tier content in Helldivers 2. I can't tell you how many times I've just outran enemies, run through Bile Titan's legs to avoid getting stopped or spat on, and avoid Charger's attacks altogether without needing to dodge, all because I am moving faster than everybody else. Yes, you can run medium and heavy armor in the defense missions or even in the regular missions, it doesn't matter, but the mitigation is really not that great and is not as amazing as compared to the speed advantage you get from wearing light armor. Now for the armor passives, this is really just what flavor you like. Having more stems and grenades is always useful, so using the medkit passive or the engineer passive is always great. Or you can have the 50% chance survival rate when hit with a lethal blow, which is also very clutch because if your teammate has a tendency to TK a lot, then the democracy protects is actually a good option as well. There are obviously several more options you can use. You just need to figure out what interests you the most, but the primary thing you wanna do is you don't wanna pick a armor passive over something like your armor weight because I think light armor is that important to the game. For the booster, I would run stamina if you're going solo, but if you're with a squad, I would keep this order in mind. You want to make sure you're running stamina, pod optimization, muscle enhancement, and UAV. Primarily because stamina is the most important tool when thinking about evasion. This helps you get your stamina back faster and also helps it deplete slower. So this is just great for getting away from enemies. Pod optimization is great because you don't spawn with half the ammo and equipment. You spawn with full ammo and equipment. Muscle enhancement has grown a lot for me because especially with dealing with the snow planets or the ones with a lot of swampiness, you can actually navigate through these very quickly instead of being slowed down significantly by these. You can swap this out for something else if the terrain is more normal. So just keep that in mind. You can swap it out for vitality or anything else. It really doesn't matter. Lastly, I think UAV is super underrated because this this helps you find things so much faster, and this paired with the Scout perk, which is another armor passive, this can help you find things really quickly. For stratagems, you can be a little bit more versatile depending on the difficulty level, but here are my suggestions. I'm gonna break this up by slots. So in slot one, you wanna run Orbital Rail Cannon for a level five and up. This is a no-brainer because this is really effective against Bile Titans, and it just flat out one-shots chargers most of the time. But if you're doing anything less than level five, I really suggest you use whatever you want to have fun with. In slot two, I want 
you to run your airstrike, and the eagle airstrike is really great for any type of difficulty in the game. Having three strikes after you get the ship upgrade before you need to reset is insanely useful and great in a lot of situations. For example, it's great with dealing with the bug holes as well as it's great with dealing with elite enemies, and just in general, if you're trying to get away from a lot of enemies, it's great to throw down at your feet and just wipe out everybody behind you. You can also swap this out for the eagle cluster bomb. This gives you four to five uses depending on your ship upgrade, of course, before it needs to reset, which is super amazing. This is great at just getting rid of a ton of enemies, but it's just not good at defeating elites and it's just not consistent at destroying the bug holes. Alternatively, of course, you can run the Eagle 500 KG, which is by far the most powerful thing you can run in the game in the airstrike category, but it only has two uses before reset, but it is just a flat out elite killing machine and could just absolutely destroy medium to small bug holes in one shot which is really really cool but ultimately at the end of the day it's just your choice but you need to run some sort of airstrike in the second slot the third slot is for your shield backpack which is a no-brainer for anything above level five Damage mitigation is just way too important after you hit level five because you're just getting swarmed by bugs. And there's so many times where this thing has just absolutely saved my life and allowed me a chance to just get away from a lot of enemies at once. Anything lower than that, feel free to have fun with this. I like to run the guard dog laser because I think it's just fun to see the kill sheet go up because it's just absolutely destroying everything. And a lot of times I don't even have to shoot a single weapon, which is awesome. For slot four, this is gonna be your weapon stratagems. This may vary depending on your party. But if you're solo, I would run the Arc Thrower. It's just so versatile. It can not only kill a ton of adds, but it's also very effective at killing Bile Titans as well as Chargers. And the fact that it's unlimited ammo and just a chaining effect again for dealing with mobs. It's just it's just too clutch. You gotta run this thing when you're running solo. If you're in a group, you gotta run anti-tank as well as I would have a couple of people running an Arc Thrower or a Flamethrower. Keep in mind that the Flamethrower and the Arc Thrower are teammate killing machines, so make sure you're not aiming at your teammates or they're anywhere in the vicinity when you're shooting at other enemies. What I would personally suggest is that you have half your party running anti-tanks and half your party running an arc thrower or a flamethrower. So for the anti-tank, this can include the spear, the recoilless rifle, or the expendable tank or the EAT. These are great for taking out elite enemies really quickly and one-shotting chargers more specifically if you shoot them in the face. The arc thrower and flamethrower again do really well at dealing with elites but they're just a little bit slower but they can deal with them if necessary. So the best thing I would do is maybe split your group up into twos, have one person running anti-tank and one person running either an arc thrower or flamethrower and complete objectives separately so that way the threat of team killing is significantly lessened. All right, so now that you have your loadout, let's talk about gameplay. On any difficulty setting lower than level five, you shouldn't have much of a problem with killing bugs. Again, a lot of times I just run the guard dog laser just for fun because it just shoots everything and I don't even need to fire a shot and I can focus on objectives. But at least on level five, you might want to consider bringing at least one person with anti-tank or maybe an arc thrower just to deal with some of the chargers and things of that nature. But again, it's really not that big of a deal. You can just eliminate those with an eagle airstrike, orbital rail cannon, or anything of that nature. Once you hit level five and six, this is when you can get into some sticky situations. Elites spawn way more frequently at these levels, so you may have to deal with waves of enemies and these elite enemies at the same time. Running the shield backpack is critical here. It's by far one of the best tools in the game, so you need to be using it. If you're solo, again, run the arc thrower and this will help you a lot. But if you're with team play, definitely make sure you're mixing in the anti-tanks as well as the arc thrower slash flamethrower, so that way you can make sure you're having a good diverse party on this. Level seven to nine is where things get spicy. Things are amplified to 11, so you're gonna have a lot more enemies, a lot more elites, and everything's gonna be just way more overwhelming to deal with. Again, make sure you're using the strategies that I talked about for level five and six, and make sure that you're using an eagle airstrike to clear out objectives as well as to clean up any enemies that are pursuing you. Again, the orbital rail cannon is amazing for dealing with bile titans as well as chargers. You can also, in place of this or in place of your eagle airstrike, run a 500 kg eagle strike to quickly deal with these elites as well, as well as deal with the other bug holes or objectives that you need to deal with. The overall strategy for this seven to nine content is to make sure you're practicing combat avoidance. Fight when you need to, avoid patrols, find the super samples, but most importantly, make sure you're focusing on the objectives and trying to get them done as quickly as possible and extracting. The longer you and your squad are in these missions, the more likely bad things are gonna happen. Getting a lot of kills in this situation does not help your team, so disengage, stay alive, and fight when you have to, but run as much as possible. All right, so that's all my strategies and loadout suggestions suggestions for dealing with terminated forces. What are some of the strategies and loadouts that you suggest? What are some weapons that I may have missed that you love to use against the terminates? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.